What up, YouTube? Hope y'all are having a fantastic Friday night. It's Friday. Bye, Felicia. King Cobra JFS back at you with another live stream. Sweating my autistic balls off. I want to give a shout out to uh, Miriam Leslie. Thank you for the $3.36. A shout out to uh, Robert John Adams. Thank you for the $20. If you want a shout out on the live streams, donating to the PayPal or buying some of that soap or getting the, the merchandise, yeah, buddy. Chill like a rock star villain. We got ourselves a drink. I got like three drinks to sip on. Now, if I drink on camera from now on, I'm not going to drink to the point of passing out. That just doesn't look good. So I'll be a bit more responsible with that shit. But speaking of alcohol, yeah, twisted tea. What up, Jesse Ryan? Happy weekend. What's up, punk rock? Checking in with the chat. Having a drink. I don't need to drink on stream all the time, but every once in a while, it's good to have a drink. I didn't have one yesterday, to be honest. Like, right, what the hell is Friday? Could combine this with Mountain Dew, but. All Bite Size Cobra videos does is rip my shit off for their own content. It's highly unoriginal, to be honest. So if you say that shit, then you're really referring to me. What's up, YouTube? That pizza was delicious. I still have a couple slices left. I got a song done. That's what's up. I got two more for the album, and then the, once I got those done, the album will be finished, and I'll be releasing Rebel Revolution through Deathbed Tapes. Let me grab my uh, PayPal link right quick, and I'll plug it. I do appreciate it if you can donate, but like I said, you really don't have to. Just tuning in to watch me stream is enough. As soon as I sell a couple uh, copies of their album, I'll have like five, six hundred bucks like I normally do. And uh, I'll be able to get my dad a Father's Day gift. I would have been able to do that earlier, but Etsy kind of screwed me and took a little bit over half of my money the $400 sale, so I was kind of like, man, it is what it is. I still like using Etsy to sell my wands, so honestly, I'm not complaining. Oops, I fart toy fell off the desk. One second. But how you cool Cobra's doing? I'll be doing some laundry tomorrow. Yeah, I will be getting my dad something for Father's Day when I get that album done and I get the money for it. Any like previous expenses or debts that you have to pay off, you just pay them off and get them out of your hair so they don't got to worry about it. But that's why people like me because I'm a man of my word. Uh, 
Now, my dad likes uh, Red Lobster, so I want to get him, like, a $50 Red Lobster gift card. That way he can treat him and my stepmom to a nice dinner, you know? I hope y'all are enjoying the weekend. The new album is sick, bro. The guitar solo for my latest song is just wild. Red Lobster is awesome, ultimate feast. You know it, Jesse Ryan. Am I celebrating the Juneteenth holiday? Yes. I am going to celebrate that. It's the day our country became a little less racist. I'll drink to that. Like, fuck racism, fuck sexism, fuck abuse of power to the people. Live on the YouTube channels. I don't care if bite size is live, to be honest. It would be as good as the original. Hope you all have a fantastic Friday. Let's find some cool shit to watch on YouTube. Here we go. And this homeless guy cracks up laughing. What's up, guys? I am back. Have you missed me? Please tell me. It's the lovely Miss Tara Babcock. Aside from being a pretty blonde with some nice titties, she actually does have an intellectual side which you wouldn't think just because of the whole blonde stereotype but she plays video games and plays bass guitar i also happen to know she's taken so i'm not trying nothing just calling it what it is damn you've missed me because if not i am doing this for absolutely nothing i'm just kidding i'm excited to be back i have a story to tell you it is one of the last two weeks where i have literally not been okay it, it's probably the most fucked up in my headspace i've ever been since i can remember since probably my teens or something jesus christ and like i'm gonna tell you all of these things that kind of set me off that kind of built up my stress and made me well not entirely made me take this time off because a lot of it has been just me being way too fucking busy trying to close the condo do a bunch of other things that all did you know you can no longer as a woman squeeze your titties on patreon because they consider that a form of masturbating like what the fuck our society makes me just want to drink a little bit I watched this video earlier, and uh, she was like, her Jeep was having troubles, like, trying to get shit done in her life. You could have a solid couple of months of just good days, and then for, like, the next two weeks, it just all goes to shit. You 
You have to remember that it could be worse, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing you got to remember is that there are people out there struggling a lot worse than you are right now. So just, just remember that. Even though I struggle with Asperger's, I don't really bitch about it. I kind of make fun of my Asperger's from time to time because it's healthier than being depressed about it. And to be honest, there are people out there who struggle with worse disabilities than what I have. So it makes me feel humble, to say the least. Also caused me a lot of stress, but at the same time, I've also been demonetized. So it kind of feels like, why the fuck am I even making videos? I'm not going to spend my... Mm -hmm. Tara Babcock got demonetized and joined the club, Sister Sledge. I got demonetized on YouTube for being harmful, hateful content. And it's like, that's some bullshit. So this Milo chick who identified as non-binary, someday she identified as a man, someday she identified as non-gender conformative, basically goes on YouTube and says that all men and women are sexist, homophobic, pigs, yada, yada, yada. Long story short, I make a video saying, hey, you can't just do that. I support what you're uh, trying to do. You know, you want to be trans or non-binary. I support it. But at the same time, like, you can't just sit there and say that everyone's racist and sexist and homophobic because you don't know everybody. And because she's non-binary, my trolls took that upon themselves to flag my video and long story short, YouTube's like, well, we're not going to have you spewing that kind of content. Like, I can't begin to imagine what people like Milo go through, to be honest. No idea. It's, it's got to be a real mess up in your head. Like, I can't begin. So I, I sympathize slash understand or try to understand and support what people like Milo do as far as the whole trans thing goes. As long as not not being super creepy about it, like Jessica Unif creepy, then yeah, who cares? Jessica Unif, to quote Ron White, things that make you go. Ugh. My precious time that I have running around doing condo shit and doing OnlyFans or Patreon and all that. If like I'm gonna be demonetized, I'm just gonna ride this out until June 9th and then I can reapply. And of course, I get my demonetization lifted because, ugh. and when I say demonetization, I mean my entire channel could not make money. I don't mean like there were a few fucking yellow dollar signs here or there. Once. Yes, this is what sucks about having YouTube controlled by a goddamn algorithm and a robotic computer. You can fucking pay YouTubers millions of dollars to flash their Bugattis, their Teslas, and their Lamborghinis, but you can't pay some poor schlup nine fifty to ten dollars an hour to sit in front of a computer and monetize all the hate comments. Eight hours a day in shifts. Because computers are not able to, to, to determine whether or not someone's a troll. All they see is a bunch of people flagging it. And if it kind of meets the criteria of breaking the guidelines, end quote, your channel gets demonetized, the video gets deleted, etc. It's horse shit. Like, I was going for a walk, and I had a fan buy me, like, three cans. And I'm like, cool, man, thanks. They didn't want to shout up, but they were just like, hey, man, keep doing your thing. You know, Miriam Leslie says, cheers for the years of the content. Thank you for the support. I appreciate that. Again, after having it reinstated and not really uploading anything new, I got demonetized. But that's like the middle of the story. So as I tell you these things, I don't feel like I should have been as sad as I was. But it's weird the headspace that you can get into after having like a hundred things at once go.
<laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. Wrong, and you just like start becoming not confident or start. I, I just like I neuroticized. I was like worried about everything. I didn't feel like myself. There's already a lot of times in these past couple months that I haven't felt like myself, but this was like three times worse. And so I just want to let you guys know where I've been, what's been going on, and give you guys an update. So Jesus. sit back, relax, maybe Christ. get some popcorn. There's some really good hundred calorie popcorn that Hunter likes to keep in the house, and just enjoy the story of my plight and my sorrow because we're going to talk about how I felt and how I feel now, which is better. So it all started when I spent like weeks trying to close on this condo. Well, I tried to even like find a condo that I could buy. I swear to God, as soon as I started looking for a condo to call my own, to not only have a place where it's mine and I can live there if anything happens with me and Hunter, but also to be able to bring most of my stuff there. So when I need to film, but there's someone else in this house, I can go over there and I can film and I can also stream because over there has good internet and here does not. So that's the main reason why I was looking for a place of my own. I think it's good to have property too. I've wanted to be a homeowner for so long and obviously I envisioned it being with my best friend with Jay getting a dream house. But for now I have a dream downtown condo which is still really fucking cool. And once I got that idea in my head I ran with it and I thought it would be a good idea. It's not something like two years ago Tara ever would have thought that she wanted but now I'm like really psyched to have it. Anyway, so I was doing a lot of shit for that. Hunter and I that's usually how it starts, Tara. To be honest, it's the domino effect. Like it starts off with something small, and then by the end of this whole escapade, you're just like, why? And then you start having your good days again, and it's like, yes. Like, I think we can all relate to that. When you're having a bad day, it just seems to get progressively worse. Like you're thinking, oh great, this happened, and then you say, well, how could this get any worse? And then it starts raining. Eh, boy. I decided, okay, the weekend's coming up. It's summer now. It's not going to be as cold. We finally need to go on some kind of fucking camping trip and just relax and be out in nature and go like lay by the fucking Colorado River and have a good time. So we decided on going on Memorial Day weekend. We were worried there would be other people, but whatever. So we packed everything into my Jeep because his Jeep still does not have a spare tire because he still needs his mods, which will give him like an upgrade. So his giant tire can actually be held by the tire mount because the stock tire mount does not hold 37 inch tires jeep shit who cares so we're like i have all my tools i have the spare tire we're going off road let's take my jeep so for the past couple weeks my jeep has been acting a little bit weird when turning like i would have to turn like maybe like a, a quarter turn to even really feel like i'm turning the wheels so hunter gets behind the wheel i always let him drive because it's like a hot submissive thing or whatever so he starts driving and he's like baby dude you're baby dude <laughs> What he says versus what I would say, dude. So paraphrasing, using my words, he's like, dude, your steering is like really fucking bad. He's like, I have to turn so much to even make the wheel turn. And I'm like, ah, yeah, it's just how my Jeep is. Your Jeep's different. You know, whatever. You got the fucking turbo. I got the fucking six cylinder. Who knows? So obviously I'm not a mechanic. So we're driving down the freeway and I shit you not. He goes, yo, the steering, I have to turn it like fucking halfway to even get it to turn now. This is sketchy. And in my head, I'm thinking, this is so annoying. We're like 20 minutes out of the city. We're about to finally get somewhere or we're getting closer to the campsite. We need this time to relax. He's having a tough time at work. I'm being stressed from this condo shit and this fucking YouTube demonetization shit. And like, I feel like every fucking platform's out to get me and I'm fucking constantly shadow banned, etc. So we just like needed some time. I, I, I completely agree, Tara Babcock. Honey, when you're sitting there getting fucking banned and demonetized on this shit, it's just like, fuck. There are kids being exposed to bullies and cyberbullying on YouTube, but you're more pissed off if the YouTube creator content displays alcohol or tobacco use. Really makes you think, doesn't it? You know, it's gotten so bad that if your video is made for the YouTube kids section, you're not allowed to comment on it. Comment on the video, period. You can't be trusted adults and be nice in the comment section. That's how bad it is. That's pretty sad, YouTube. Together to be out in the wilderness. And I didn't want to stop. But what... Put that in the context. If a kid makes a video doing a soda pop review... You can't leave a comment on like, good job, buddy. 
because people can't be trusted not to be mean to each other on YouTube. It's just sad. I think it's sad, like him being concerned about it, I was like, fuck, it. let's just pull off of the, the freeway. So we're in the leftist lane and i'm like all right let's start merging over it's so packed that it takes him a second to start merging and as he's about to fucking merge oh my god the car starts death wobbling if you don't know what death wobbling is when you're inside it feels like the whole frame of the car hold on let me turn off my fucking loud the whole frame of the car is detaching from the body of the car it feels like it's like and you feel like you're detaching, it's terrifying. And you lose a lot of the control you have over the vehicle as well. And I thought the steering went out because he was talking about the steering being bad and stuff. So I'm like, holy shit. And I'm like shaking. I'm not freaking out though. He's like slowing down gradually, pulling off onto the left side, which is not the correct side you're supposed to pull over on. And he just stops there and he's able to take it to like a stop without like running into the girder or running into another car, which I was like, you're a fucking badass. This is amazing. And I'm like, you're doing a good job, Hunter. Just keep, do keep doing it, you're slower so yeah you got it you got it and I was like coaching him calmly even though my hands were fucking shaking because we're going 75 on the freeway to like a complete fucking stop on the left side and we're stopping the side and I'm like oh and I have no doors and on my side every time I get out I'm like this far away from these fucking cars whizzing past in the fast lane right so Hunter and I for some reason we just work so well I feel like anything like that would have had Jay and I like arguing or yelling at each other or we wouldn't be able to like calmly handle it as well as Hunter and I do but Hunter and I were just like all right we gotta call AAA so we call AAA and AAA is under Jay's name and I'm not on the fucking account and I'm like well can't you just have him call or like can't you see that like the Jeep is on the account or something and they're like no it's fucking Memorial Day weekend which is an excuse they kept giving us it was like they're like it's Memorial Memorial Day weekend, so there's gonna be a lot more calls. So you're gonna have to wait a long time. You don't want to like restart this because we already had started it, started the service, and he's like, you're gonna have to restart it. It's gonna take even longer if you wanna make a whole new account in your name or add yourself to the account. And then you also have to wait 48 hours because you can't pay the service fee if you're just someone on the account, not the main account holder. And it was just like, what the fuck? And the whole time, let me tell you, the AAA fucking phone number is cancer i understand that some places want to make Jealousy it a little bit goodness. more convenient so you can talk into it be like tell me what you're trying to look for and be like new ticket or something you have to talk into it rather than pressing buttons but yeah tara babcock's pretty hot but aside from that she's got a personality too like i feel like it's a stereotype a lot of hot chicks have to deal with So at this point, she'll get out of her car and realize that when she got the uh, stress and shocks painted on underneath the Jeep, the, the lug nuts fell out. A simple lug nut that holds together. Fuck. But like half the time, you have cars whizzing past you. So when they would ask for input of my voice, a car would whiz past, or a million fucking cars, and then I'd be like, I'm sorry, I didn't understand what the fuck you said. And I'm like, is there any way I can just press buttons? So often it would get to the point where it would hang up on me before I could even get somewhere. And I'm like, oh my God. But I'm like, I'm not keeping my cool. I'm like, we gotta make it. Oh my God, it already says we're projected to make it to our campsite at like fucking midnight. It's okay, it's okay, we will make it. So the plan was to have Jay come down and he fucking he ends up coming down long story short he ends up coming down and being on the other side of the road on the left side so there's like a girder the jeep and jay's car and we're all just sitting there like powwowing like what the fuck do we do this fucking uh like it's like a fucking traffic patrol dude but he's not a cop he's just like a guy that like checks out certain crashes or makes sure that everyone's okay it's like a dude in something that looks like a tow truck but he can't tow it's really weird so he pulls up behind us and he's like, yo, you can't be here. What's wrong? He looks at the Jeep and like, I don't know if it was a control arm or I think it was a control arm or was it the drag link? I'm not sure. One of them just didn't have a bolt on. I had just gotten the Jeep's fucking suspension painted red. I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah, that's important to check your suspension when you get it done painted. Thank you to the fan who bought uh, 
three different variety cans here. Appreciate that. But I got the Jeep suspension painted red, and then I also got the rims painted red on the wheels, not like the inner part, but the outer part, so they have like more red accents on the Jeep. And they had to take all of this front end suspension off to do that, to like powder coat some of it and paint some of it. And I'm like, we haven't even been off road. There's not even a nick in this non powder coated paint. How the fuck am I already losing bolts again? And if you guys remember before, this has happened before. So I'm like really fucking pissed off at Jeep only. And I'm like, I don't know what should we do? Should we fucking like. That's why if you have a car, you gotta check for shit like that. Safety first. So Tara Babcock was not okay for the last two weeks. I'm sorry she had to go through that, to be honest. Life can be nerve-wracking in its own special way for a lot of us. Each and every one of us will experience our own struggles. If you're about to go on a, if you're about to go on a camping trip, you might want to inspect your car and make sure it's roadworthy before you go off. Because if you would have if, fuck you, if you would have seen that before you started driving. Like, no one thinks twice. Like, you think, okay, you get it power coded by a professional. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are things you're going to think about, dog. You're going to be painting someone's car. You know, if she would have gone off road and gotten into a car wreck, the person that power coded her frame underneath the Jeep could have got a big ass lawsuit. Like have AAA tow it to Jeep only. Jeep only is closed. It's like a Friday. And so I'm like, all right, we're going to have them tow it to Hunter's house. And then we're going to take everything out of the back and shove it in Hunter's Jeep. And we're just going to go. And we're still going to make the best of the fucking weekend, right? So what ends up happening is... Now, could you imagine that? Like you waste all that gas, time, and money. That would suck ass, dude. Now here's what ends up happening. Just a just a real shit show of events. And it just shows you that just because she's pretty and that she's a YouTube celebrity doesn't mean she doesn't experience problems like the rest of us. Like I'm not trying anything, I'm just acknowledging it for what it is. Tara Babcock's hot. That's the kind of personality too. Like you look beyond the uh, big, pretty eyes and blonde hair. Is the guy, the patrol guy, says he's going to stop the entire freeway so we can get off the freeway. It takes about an hour and a half, and lo and behold, AAA is not. You could just say this video is quite titillating. Yes. Anyone? There yet, but we do end up having a police escort behind us stop like five lanes of traffic on the 215 so that we could wobble our fucking fat asses off the freeway and end up in this parking lot of like- That's like one thing that scares me about having a car, to be honest, is there's so- a pain in the ass. They they break. They you gotta fix them. And it's like shit. Now, if I won the lottery, I'd build a Model T C cab rat rod hearse. I got this vision for a hot rod that I want to build. It would look sick if I had the money to do it. I totally would, but it is what it is. Meantime, cars are expensive, and uh, yep, yeah, and they're a pain in the ass to fix. You know, you got nobody usually does like a pre-road inspection when taking their car out. If, like, if it's across town to the grocery store or whatever, that's one thing. But like if you're going on a camping trip, you're going off road with it and shit, legit, check your car, check for the oil, check how much gas you got in your tank. These are little, little teeny tiny things that'll make your ride smoother. It may take you longer to get to your camping trip, but in the long run, what took longer? 
I'm going to take your broken ass Jeep back to your boyfriend's house. You can take his Jeep back out. You know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah. Like, I don't care. I would have felt bad for anyone in this situation, dog, whether it was terror back, cock or not, to be honest. That, that's just the shitty part about owning a car. Now, my bike front tire is flat. It's a badass chopper bike that has pedals and ape hangers. It's a fucking sick little pedal bike. And I'll freak in. I'll uh, get that fixed when I can. Get it fixed when I get my new album done. Like Wells yes. Fargo. So Hunter calls AAA now and he's like, yo, we're in the parking lot of Wells Fargo now and we are a red Jeep, right? So 30 minutes later, Jay is sitting there eating fucking cherries or something. Do you think for a second, okay, they, they made it to a... Tr they call AAA. They made it to a parking lot that's more public and in the city, easier to find, right? <laughs> she had one of those moments where it's just like, can I just catch a break? Fuck, we've all had those moments. Or we just have like our worst days. And then when the worst days are behind us, it makes us appreciate the better days ahead of us. And that's the truth, YouTube. Corona Refresca Moss Mango Citrus. This is featured on the channel before. This is tasty stuff. It's Friday. Crack it open. I feel like the good days are what we need to get us through the bad days. You feel me, YouTube? That is fucking tasty by itself. Even with the mango monster like I mixed last time, like just by itself it's tasty. Mm. Something Hunter's on the phone. I have an amazing picture, which is like a great juxtaposed picture of the essence of Jay and the essence of Hunter. Like Hunter taking care of business and Jay just like nonchalantly eating cherries. He even offered me like a random fucking Domino's breadstick that he had in the trunk of his car. Like what the fuck was even going on? But so we're waiting for AAA and across the street at the gas station, not in the fucking Wells Fargo parking lot, like we said, the fucking AAA guy pulls in. Jay runs up to the street and goes, Hey, over here. And we're like confused. The guy's yelling back, we're not here for you. We're not here for you. And we look at the gas station and there's an older red Jeep. So the fucking moron thought that the first Jeep he sees this red in a random parking lot that's not the one we specified is his red Jeep. And it's like, so oh, that had to suck. Like, you just want to go camping, relax with your hubby, smoke a blunt, and enjoy some nature, and then your Jeep has to fuck up. You call AAA, you redneck rig it back to the nearest parking lot of the Wells Fargo Bank. Now, I only have three, and that's all I need, to be honest. On a real note, I didn't like the fact that I passed out on stream the other night day drinking that was a bit pathetic to be honest so i'm gonna tone it down just a little bit like it's okay to have a good time on stream and hang out with my fans but passing out's a bit excessive Yeah, I got a text message from one of my trolls earlier, and I quote. But she was sharing a beer to suck on. You eat pizza like someone who's trapped in the basement. Your dad should put you in the basement instead of a group home. I responded with, yeah, I bet she wish you could choke on my cock, but uh, your mom already beat me to it. And then I blocked, deleted, 
and remove the text from my phone. If I wasn't famous on YouTube, people wouldn't try so hard to fuck with me. That's all I'm saying. You want to send me some dumbass text message like, you'll never be as famous as Dame Drops or Ken Dominic or Report of the Week or George World Tour. You'll never be famous like those foodies on YouTube. And I'm like, dude, it's not about being famous on YouTube. It's about providing content for people and entertaining them. If you get famous off of your YouTube, that's just a bonus. Drink to that. Some Asian dude, and he's like, no, no, no. You can see the Asian dude going like, no, 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 no. I don't need this. No, and then he just drives off, and the fucking AAA guy drives off too. Oh shit! So like the owner of the Jeep. It was just a miscommunication. They were telling AAA, hey, Dick Lick, we're in the fucking Wells Fargo parking lot, and they think it's for the Jeep and the gas station across the street. And you're like, hey, over Oh, dude, that had to suck. You know, it wouldn't kill people to pay the fuck attention because common sense and paying attention doesn't cost you a thing, even though it's common sense and paying attention. Those two things are free to use. And if people use them more often, that and people being a little bit nicer to each other, the world would be a much better place. We're like, what the fuck? Why did he just leave? We were clearly like, hey, over here. And we were like, flabber. God damn it. I'm not trying to be a pig, but Tara Babcock's got some nice titties. Shit. You want to call me a typical guy, go right the fuck ahead, but I've seen chicks who go crazy for dudes like Magic Mike who've got a huge cock hanging out of a banana hammock, and somehow that's different. That's what I'm saying. Like, women and men are pretty much the same in a lot of ways, but one side gets away with certain things, other sides don't. Men can get away with showing off their muscles. They get called studly and, er, look at me, yes. But if women show off their titties because it's summertime, it's hot, and they don't want boob sweat, you know what I'm saying? They get called nasty names like slut and whore and skake and slag and this and that. And it's like, fuck your double standards. For gas, if you don't fucking understand what the fuck just happened, it was so fucking confusing. So we decide, fuck it. Put it into perspective, Tara Babcock is a sexually liberated of age woman. And uh, she's been very open about her uh, sexual experiences on the old YouTube. And uh, a lot of people would call that promiscuous or slutty, but I'm like, dude, fuck off. I'm tired of the whole you need to get laid culture we live in. I'm tired of women getting judged for their sex life. All men's sex life is pretty much celebrated. Unless you like the same sex, then you're pretty much shunned from society. I like big of age titties. Fucking sue me. Like, we're going to try drive this thing home. Hunter drives it, and Jay is going behind us at, like, 10 miles an hour in his car, like, kind of blocking. We're both using, like, our hazards. Yeah, if you want to smell good for the ladies, check out Tactical Soap. Links in the description box below. I recently ordered five bars of my Bond Original Number 1. I love that black soap. It smells good. Listen, the soap I shower with is the shit. Man up and get the tactical advantage with tactical soap. You think this product sounds too good to be true? I'm telling you, it's not. Tactical soap is awesome. I take a shower and I go to the bar to have drinks. And every chick I walk by in the bar, including the bartender, is just like, that goth dude smells good. Oh, that's King Cobra JFS. He wears Bond tactical soap. 
And usually when men see the way that women react to me when I wear the soap, they're like that ugly, autistic, balding, boggling piece of shit. Sarcasm, I'm actually a decent guy, but you get what I'm saying. They're like, dude, I'm going to get some of that soap. Yes. Using the affiliate link and coupon code KINGCO, where I will get you 15% off your next order. That's most definitely what the fuck is up, YouTube. Ah, yes. Charcoal, leather, and a hint of sweetness. I love the smell of Bond number one, to be honest. I like, I like the smell of all the tactical soaps thus far. But Bond number one's my favorite. It's black, it looks gothic, and it just it smells good. It's like having a wingman on your skin, man. If you're smooth with the ladies and you want to smell good for on top of it, you can pull some shit, dog. It doesn't guarantee you'll get laid, but it does increase your chances. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mind making a pheromone soap for the ladies so that when it collides with, like, the male version of the tactical soaps, magic. Goddess tactical soap. Make it pink and purple. Make it smell really pretty and feminine. And when women put it on, it's a very similar effect to the male version, but it works on males instead of, you know what I'm saying, like the re like a, a tactical soap for women, basically, you know what I'm saying, that'd be sick, dude, and then when that pheromone mixes with the pheromones of any of the, the male versions, you know what I'm saying, it just does its thing, And eventually Jay's like, yo, I had reservations with Brittany at nine because it's like 8.30 now or some shit. And he's like, is it okay if I go? It looks like you're okay. It looks like every time it starts wobbling, you just slow to a stop and then it stops. And then you Let me give you some advice, YouTube. Some dickhead troll texts you and says, you ain't never going to be as famous as those spooty YouTubers. You tell them fuck you and you keep making videos. You do not stop, okay? I'm serious. One of my favorite songs by Ozzy Osbourne is I Don't Want to Stop. Long live the fucking Prince of Darkness. Yes! You know, it's the truth. Well, like, when people are trying to get you down, if I can tell you you ain't good enough, tell them fuck off. And you keep doing your thing until you make it. And when you make it, you just keep going. All your fucking haters over the years, all your fucking goddamn haters over the years are going to be looking at you like, oh, King Cobra JFS, wow. Got to dream big and work hard for it, man. I'm destined to win the lottery or become a fucking rock star like international one of these days. It's going to happen. Now I don't have enough money to build my damn dream house. And when I'm sitting there chilling up in my clock tower dream house, like, what of it, YouTube? Y'all gonna be sitting there, all the haters talking shit over the years, and they're gonna be going, he fucking did it. That son of a bitch fucking did it. He got his clock tower dream house, he fucking did it. And that thing is sick. And they'll be saying that shit to themselves inside, but on the outside, they'll be talking mad shit, like, oh, your clock tower dimension sucks. And I'm like, yeah, bet you wish you had one. If I built my fucking clock tower Victorian Second Empire Gothic mansion, it'd be like a church where I could teach my religion and teach people how to carve wands, like Casper would have his own little Hogwarts, so to speak. Yes. Details are in here. That's what keeps me going, YouTube, is playing guitar, my idols. You know, my two biggest idols are Danny Filth and Ozzy Osbourne. My friends, my family, my YouTube fans. The idea of building my dream house, just getting up and being like, yeah, I want to play some guitar because I can. And just fucking do it. the guitar, man. 
listening to music, having a drink, and just doing my thing, making wands. I love to make wands. Start to finish, magnifique. Okay, I, I mailed the wands off about a day and a half ago, so like, yes. They might be there Sunday or Monday for those of you who ordered a wand from the recent batch. I appreciate your patronage to my Etsy. Um, um, nothing is sweeter than proving your haters wrong. When I first started playing guitar, I wasn't the greatest. And then when I first started making YouTube videos, I wasn't that good at guitar. I was decent enough, but now I fucking shred on that bitch like it's no one's business. And when people see me play guitar, they're just like, oh, holy crap. This fucking Cobra play guitar. Yeah, how many, all the years I play guitar on YouTube, people would comment, your guitar playing sucks. I ignored that shit and I kept going and I kept playing guitar and eventually I got so good to even where I'm like, okay, damn, that came from my fingertips? Shit. I don't care who the fuck you are. They tell you you ain't good enough, you tell them fuck off and you keep going. That determination. You got to find that strength inside of you to keep going. That's why I wrote the song on my new album, Rebel Revolution. It's the song called Keep Going. That's kind of what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get the picture of it, I guess. Yes. I want to keep watching this Tara Babcock video, and then I might uh, play that song for you on stream. You go again until you hit some kind of random thing and then the suspension starts wobbling like crazy. Hunter's like, yeah, let him go. I'm like, all right. And we go and we're passing like the airport and there's like homeless dudes at the bus stop. And this fucking Jeep starts wobbling uncontrollably. I still don't even know what it looks like from the outside. It just feels like you're about to die from the inside. To put things into perspective, when Triple A didn't pick up Tara Babcock and uh, her man... And they said, fuck it, and they redneck rigged it back to uh, her, her hubby's place to switch Jeeps. Like, they'd drive and drive and drive, and then they start to get wobbly, so they'd stop and let it correct itself, and then they keep going. And when she was passing by the airport, I guess, she saw a homeless person laughing at her situation. And she didn't get mad about it, she just laughed with them, like... And maybe in that moment, she realized, you know what? It could be worse. She realized that she's fortunate to have the people she has in her life kind of thing, you know? And this homeless guy cracks up laughing. And I'm literally like, well, at least we... Now, if I won the fucking lottery, I would donate a million dollars to poverty resistance here in town, to be honest. And I'd do it in my buddy Alex Anderson's name. We made a homeless guy laugh, and then Hunter and I start laughing. We're going like two miles an hour. It takes like 50 minutes to get. It's always good when you can make people laugh, man. Now, this one time, me and my two friends were at the hospital because a friend of mine's husband, who was also a friend of mine, was waiting for a nurse or a doctor to see them, and it was taking forever. The waiting room in the hospital was overcrowded with people. People around me are just coughing. They look sick. They look miserable. All of a sudden, I get a call from some spam telemarketer type trying to sell me car insurance. So without skipping a beat, they're like, sir, can we get the name and make and model of your car? I said, yes, I drive a 1926 Model T. Like, how old are you? Oh, I'm 84 years old and still driving. And they realized, one, this can't be real, or two, this is this guy doesn't need insurance. This is and they just hung up, click. Everyone in the waiting room started laughing their asses off. The nurses and the doctors walking by were chuckling. My friends were laughing their asses off. And I'm like, hey, look at that. I made people in a hospital laugh. That uh that, that made me feel good. And I was like, yes. 
You know how you make a skeleton laugh? Tickle his funny bone. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a reason why telemarketers don't call me anymore because I'll fuck with them back. Like legitimately to the point where like they'll put me on the do not call list without me asking just because they don't want to, you know, I pull out one of my zany voices. <laughs> Freaking sweet. Eat you have it. Get home in the back roads, going very, very fucking slow, like way under the speed limit. Some places in the ghetto, it was kind of creepy, but it was nice weather. And I was just thinking and talking to Hunter about like how amazing he is and we are together for being able to handle that. And even though it was like the most stressful possible outcome ever, possibly, that. This is something I've never understood about chicks. Like, if you're constantly pulling up your shirt and your pants, it's like your ass crack is showing and your titties are showing. <coughs> Excuse me. And every so often you're just like... <sniffs> it's like, that's got to be annoying as shit. But hey, you, you do you, girl, fine, judging. All I got to say is, damn, Tara Babcock, I bet you got some really strong back muscles. <laughs> yes. Yo, you want to be real about this shit? I get called a pig because I like chicks that are of age with big tits. But nobody hardly ever says shit if a woman says she likes big dick. And here's the best part of it. Men, we can't control the size of our dick. We're pretty much stuck with, stuck with what we got. Women have all these options available to get bigger titties if they want them. Not saying they have to, but that's just the truth. And sometimes those options aren't necessarily the best. They leave scarring and yeah... I want to make a breast enhancement pill that contains the hormone and pregnancy blocker pills. You know, the hormone that makes women's tits bigger when they take birth control. Yeah, you take that hormone and multiply it by about 10,000% and stick it into a pill form. So that it, also, it also supports healthy skin, hair and nails, and prevents cervical and breast cancer. It makes your hair soft and your skin just glow. That'd be like the fucking baddest motherfucking pill, dude. Because there are some women, and I hate to say it, who feel a little confidence issues about their breast size. It's just the same as men feeling confident about their muscle or dick size. And they can't afford fucking a $10,000 boob job, and it's just like, dog. First of all, I'm going to tell you something. Okay, you're beautiful at any size you have. Second of all, if that man doesn't appreciate your titty size, find you a man who does. You know what I'm saying? Now, ladies, if you're in a consensual relationship where you're about to fuck a dude consensually, if some dude pulls down his pants like, yeah, look what I'm packing. There have been chicks out there who point and laugh. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. And I feel sorry for the motherfucker that has to go through that, dog. If you're a dude and you're an of-age adult, and you pull your pants down consensually in front of an of-age female, and she just points at your tiny-ass dick and laughs, you know, it's a bit disconcerting. Like, and then the, then the, same, the same woman that laughs at the dude's dick size will bitch when dudes laugh at her titty size. It's the same fucking argument. Like, if you wouldn't want someone laughing at you because you got a flat ass or no titties or a busted ass face, you know what I'm saying? Then don't laugh at that dude for having a tiny dick because it's the same fucking argument.
Although I forget, if you laugh at a woman for having small titties, you're body shaming. But if you laugh at a dude for having a small dick, well, that's just his goddamn problem, isn't it? Now, men, before you bitch and complain, women are held to a higher beauty standard in our society. That's why women get the whole body positivity movement and us men don't. So if you want to bitch because you're not held to the same standard, well, try being a woman for a couple months and dealing with the problems that women have to deal with. And women, you're not the only ones who are alone, like, in this struggle as far as body hair goes. Women are told to shave your pits because that's gross. And some women get offended by that, so they'll grow their armpit hair out extra long. Meanwhile, men are being handed commercials like the whole Manscaped. Shave your balls. You see the Manscaped commercials? There's some hot of age chick standing next to a goddamn Hummer. You're like, fellas, I like a smooth ride. And you're just like, wait a minute. If there was a fucking product out there specifically designed to make women's pussies easier to shave, like Manscaped, but for women, and they called it like Womenscape, and it has some hot Fabio looking motherfucker riding a white horse saying, Ladies, when I eat my pussy out, I like my pussy to be smooth. So get the new womanscape today. Women everywhere would lose their shit about it, dude. We were able to get through it with, like, minimal problems and still be like, yeah, fuck it, let's salvage this trip. So we go on the trip. And we finally get there. I think it like we set up at like 2 a.m., which is like different than projected. It was supposed to be like 4 a.m. or something, but we were able to go a little faster off road. On the off road portion to get to the campsite, Hunter's Deep actually has a bunch of like problem lights on. And I'm like, oh my God, the same thing is happening in the same night. And I was already tense from like almost dying on the freeway. So like all of the driving that Hunter was doing in general, I just had like a negative feeling about it. all I wanted to do was just get to the campsite and set up, which takes like an hour. So we were already so fucking tired from the day. It was like a hundred degrees out. So we were standing doorless Jeep, a hundred degrees out waiting for the fucking AAA dude for like hours and hours and hours and wasting time. And we were just exhausted. And we're like, these lights are on. But Fortunately, I was able to get enough service on the way to Google it and see that it's just probably a short or something. But like at this point, I'm like, I'm so over like Jeep problems. I'm just like, oh my God, let's just keep going. Let's just be safe. So the weekend was great. Here is some footage I'm going to overlay of our camp. I didn't get much. Actually, there was this guy at the camp. Dude, that's a pretty campsite. I've gone camping before, and I like to go camping, to be honest, I do. I do, I like, if I can go camping, and they allow guns at the campsite, I'll go camping with my double barrel shotgun, and I'm just content. Sipping a couple beers... Pop a couple rounds off into a dead tree. Good old clean Wyoming fun. I don't get to go shooting out on the range too often, but I thoroughly enjoy it when I can. Now my double barrel shotgun is mainly for home defense. I don't get to go to the range too often, which I don't mind. It's a rare treat for me, to be honest. The smell of gunpowder as you're blasting away at safe to shoot at targets. Y'all follow the YouTube channel. You see me and Darf Lenny doing our shooting videos. You know you know what's up.
campsite over from ours, and it was packed because it was Memorial Day. Usually, we had this whole entire place to ourselves. We had. Of course, it's gonna be packed when it's Memorial Day, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like it's summer, the weather's beautiful. We want to support our fallen troops, so everyone's gonna be out camping and just. Enjoying that American lifestyle. Fuck yes. We love our bacon. We love our beer. We love our trucks. We love our flag and we give no fucks. We have democracy, even though it's full of hypocrisy. We don't give a fuck because we're proud Americans. Fuck yeah. Got a bunch of motherfuckers who text me a bunch of dumb shit like, You belong in a group home, Josh. And I laugh because, one, I'm overqualified for that shit. Two, I don't make enough money to be in a group home. And three, I don't need to be in one, to be honest. And four, that's not an insult. I have a friend of mine who I know who's special needs, and he lives in a group home. And the dude has three jobs and lives a perfectly normal life. So you're saying that like it's an insult, but I'm like, dude, you're fucking, you're dumb. You want to talk all this mad fucking shit, but it's like, you don't know, dude. You don't know like I, like I know. Because they don't know. Like I know. Yes. Had guys up on the hill and guys over there. So this guy comes over and he's like, do you have a lighter? And we do because we make our own fucking fire. He like let me hit the blunt that we fucking lit for him. And I was like, fucked. But I was like, it's so fucking... What? Tara Babcock smokes weed? Oh, shit. Cannabis is a big part of Cobra Cult. I call that the magic circle. In fact, my cult slogan is the black flame to light my green smoke. Just the truth. A vav Lucifer. And beautiful. I need to take some footage. So the footage you're seeing right now is of the campsite and of. Yo, Tara Babcock, that is some pretty campsite, girl. That's what's up. It's pretty much the only footage I got when we were out there because I was just relaxing. We really had a great time. Met some cool people. We just like hung out in the river. The river was actually not too cold because of how hot it was during the day and lots of awesome stuff, lots of bonding and all of that. And that was probably the end of like not back to back stress. So when I get home, I have to deal with like 200 things. I swear to God in a row, like one of the first. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Like you have a moment where it's just nothing but shit luck for several hours, several days. And you get a break where it's just like, oh, finally it stops. And then you get back to reality and it's like, great, more shit to deal with. You deal with that and you fucking, you get over it. That's life. Life is a roller coaster. Or as Ozzy would put it, life is a crazy train. Now, I got, like, some Mountain Dew to mix with these drinks if I want. But I'm just going to drink that shit straight because that's what I'm feeling. Now, I got one more drink to drink before I close out the stream. I don't care if I have any alcohol to drink tomorrow. To be honest, it's Friday night. I'm here to entertain my fans. With the worldwide pandemic, and you're drinking a Corona, you bastard!
Mm, yes, the Camel Silver Ice 24 High Gravity Lager. This is like 10.6% alcohol and volume. This stuff mixes great with Mountain Dew, so I might just grab me a cup. Or I could just drink it straight. I don't have to have a shandy. I don't have to mix my drinks to enjoy them, to be honest. First things was that I had to when I was closing on the condo. Like I had to work with the lender, the escrow person, my real estate agent, and I kept having to coordinate them as if I was some kind of middleman professionally. And I had to keep doing their jobs for them, keep asking them, okay, what's the next step? How long do you think that will take? Have you done this? Have you sent the documents here? And like that took like a week. And it was like they were telling me that I would be done by Wednesday and it's Friday and I have plans to like celebrate with hunter this new condo <laughs> oh yes no this uh camel silver eyes 24 it's good beer i feel like it's cheap <laughs> it definitely gets the job done but two or three cans of this shit you'll definitely be feeling it and so I was still coordinating with them back and forth, back and forth at the end of Friday, just trying to get the deed sent to the fucking condo place so that I could actually move into the condo. They tell me everything's good. I go into the office with Hunter and I'm like, yo, we're just picking up the keys and doing all this stuff. And they're like, oh, we need the deed still. And I'm like, what in the world? Like they fucking sent the deed. So I'm like texting my real estate agent who just was like, hey, I made the sale. Dirty deeds, done that cheap. Dirty deeds, done that cheap. Oh, dirty deeds and the done with sheep. Oh, dirty deeds and the done with sheep. Cyanide, hungry chew, TNT, high voltage, done dirt sheep. Oh. Yes, I like listen to ACDC. You got a problem with that? Fuck off. Fucking hell spells. Cause I'm TNT, I'm dynamite. First time I heard TNT by ACDC, I was playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 on the PlayStation 1. That just tells you that I'm definitely 30 years old. <laughs> yes. Fucking hands off. Fuck you, bitch. Which is really fucking stressful. And I'm just like, oh, this is like the beginning of my stresses. And I really don't want to even think about how many other ones there were. The next ones were really big and really kind of life-changing and shocking to me. And pertain to the criminal thing that I have going on that I can't talk about right now. So that was, I think, what hit my self-esteem and like hit me the hardest because it was something I couldn't get out of. I had to do, costs money, takes time, further stresses me out when I'm trying to deal with actually enjoying the good parts of the condo now that I've closed, like furnishing it or like shopping or... You know, when I Google the whole King Cobra JFS thing, it pops off as an American songwriter slash guitar player who makes YouTube videos. I'm like, yes! That's most definitely what the fuck is up, YouTube. You know, just celebrating and having a good time. But of course, there were bits and pieces of good times in between, but all of this stress just kept piling up on me and I feel like it was <laughs> unrelenting. So I had to do this thing for the criminal case, which I, I'm sorry, I just can't talk about yet. And I had no choice and it was kind of just Slapped me in the face. So yeah, fucking Tara Babcock is hot. And I know for a fact she's of age. I fucking hate Chimos more than I hate my YouTube trolls. I don't drink to that. Dealing with that, and while I was dealing with that, I had to pay more money. Old enough to smoke, old enough to poke, old enough to drink, old enough to sink in the pink. All right. Because of more stipulations on something, and I have to wait more. 
<laughs> no, like I could date a chick who was 18 or older that's legally allowed, but I prefer chicks who are 21 and up, to be honest. Because if you can't take your girlfriend out to the bar for a nice night on the town and have some drinks, then it's kind of pointless, to be honest. That's the goddamn truth. Oh, yes. Or time, and I still have not resolved the whole thing. Like, I have to go tomorrow, and I still, like, my... Oh, yes, I took a shower with my Bond soap, and I love the way it smells. And women love it even more. Future in a way, but not in a dire way, just in a very, very inconvenient, annoying way for a while, is up in the air still, so there's still that little bit of looming stress, and it's just like, oh... And then when I finally feel like the stress is a little bit over, I'm like, all right, we're going to go to a Golden Knights game. And this really wasn't that big of a deal. But for me, it was just like, why do things keep, like nothing goes well, nothing goes right. So our friend Mia, she bought us tickets. We get there and apparently they fucking charge back her account without letting her know. And the money seemed to go through, but didn't. So we didn't have tickets. So we ended up having the, these jerseys that I bought for me and Hunter. Like we were just so excited to go. So excited to finally like, blow off some steam, have some fun. And I've never been to a game before. And I was really excited. I'm getting into it because of Hunter. And they're just like, yeah, you can't get in. And so we end up just getting really, really fucking drunk at the bar around the corner. Like, wait. Yes. When your friend's credit card declines and charge backs the tickets, go to the bar and get drunk. Yes. Drunk. I got way too drunk. I got in like a really fucking dumb fight with Hunter. End up calling Jay and. No, okay. If you're getting so drunk, you're getting into a fight with your other half. That's when you know you've had too much. Like. If I had a girlfriend she said I drank too much, she was like, Josh, you need to slow down. I'd be like, okay, whatever. Personally speaking, nobody tells me to slow the fuck down. Okay? You hear me? Like, alcohol is legal, I'm of legal age. And as long as I'm not causing a ruckus or disturbing the peace or hurting people, who the fuck cares? Like, emotionally, I might hurt a couple people who care about me. Because it's like, Josh, your drinking concerns me. And it's like, well, I learned from the best. Busting balls, of course. Just like, it was stupid. Because the only thing in my life that was going right at that point, YouTube wasn't going right. Fucking the condo wasn't going right. This legal stupid thing wasn't going right. Like, every little thing seemed to, like, break apart. Yeah, that's that's how it was. Like I said earlier, Tara Babcock. That's like I said earlier. When you're struggling with shit and you're having a bad day, it's just one thing after another. That's just, that's how it is for a lot of people, to be honest. But... Our struggles will make us stronger people. The only thing that was going right was me and Hunter. And I somehow get blackout drunk and say some dumb shit to him. And then so you and Hunter have my blessing. Whatever you want to fucking do, as long as you're doing it with people who are of age and it's consensual. Cool. Uh, uh. And fucking Jay's driving us home. It was really fucking stupid. Obviously, I'm not going to get too far into the issues, but we are good now, thankfully. And then after all of this, I'm hungover. I'm like kind of sad. I'm just like, oh, I get an email from Patreon and they're like, hey, guess what? You can't go like this with your tits in any of the videos. So, so on top of having to do with a broken ass Jeep and all this other bullshit, like I said earlier, yeah, according to Patreon, you can't squeeze your titties because it's considered masturbation. I'm like, can your titties squeeze pussy juice? Like, is there a gland that makes titties squeeze pussy juice out of your nipples? Or do you just fucking ejaculate cum out of your nipples? If the answer is no, then how the fuck is it masturbation? 
just because a bunch of horny ass dudes are like, oh my god, Tara Babcock, squeeze your titties. Oh yeah, I'd squeeze it if it was full of consent. Oh fuck. <laughs> Uh, just because people fucking jack off to Tara Babcock doesn't mean fucking that her squeezing your titties is masturbation. That's fucking stupid, YouTube. I'm like, okay, so, you know, that just screws Patreon out of someone who gets a lot of money. You like, you want people to come to your website, let Tara Babcock squeeze her fucking titties while she's doing a video. And you'll have more people to your fucking website. You want to try to pull this whole, oh, we're family-friendly bullshit. Fuck you, okay? Like, there were worse things on the internet. You see, like, Tara Babcock standing there in a bikini fucking playing with her titties. And she turns to the camera and spanks her ass and says, I'll be your sexy goddess. And you sit there like, yeah, shit. And it's just enough to make you bust your not. That's pretty tame compared to some of the shit that they do have out there on the uh, internet. You go on to fucking X videos, and if you look up gangbang porn, you're going to see some poor of age chick getting fucking slammed out by one dude in her ass, one dude in her pussy. One dude in her mouth, one dude in between her titties, and then a fucking dude in each hand, and then a dude's cock in each hand, and she's just getting <laughs> cummed on ten ways till fucking Sunday. But you want to have a stink about Tara Babcock squeezing her titties on Patreon? Holy shit! No, society's bullshit just makes my fucking head hurt. It's like, what in the Fuck YouTube. Go through all of your fucking content and delete anything that has you fondling tits because fondling tits is fucking masturbation. Oh, what? That's what the look on her face is like, what? I totally agree, Tara Babcock. 1,000. I'm not just saying that because Tara Babcock's a smoking hot blonde with some big ass titties. <laughs> Stereotypes. I actually experienced this with YouTube about two years ago. It's Valentine's Day. And I said to my of age fans after I age restricted the video, I literally said, hey, if you want to see me dance on my car coaster, Pay me 50 bucks and I'll play some guitar and blah, 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 you know? And my fans delivered on that shit. So I made a video legit of me playing guitar on my cock holster, showing off my huge cock and my awesome guitar skills. And some asshole jealous troll who wish they could play guitar like that or wish they had a dick that big fucking flagged that shit and legit... YouTube took it down because it violated YouTube's guidelines. But I've seen videos of chicks who are buck-ass naked doing yoga. And I'm like, wait a minute. YouTube doesn't allow nudity on YouTube. Oh, but I forgot. Our society worships the female form. So therefore, if it's a naked female, they might get more leeway with YouTube's guidelines. Oh my fucking god. This is part of my income, and now I have to delete god knows how much fucking content over the last five, six years, because I don't delete content. If you go on my Patreon, <laughs> shameless plug, you know, haha, make me feel better. Fucking sign up, whatever. If you go on there, you get years worth of content for whatever fucking tier you sign up for. So it's like, I have to go through all of... I also have a Patreon. I have the Chill Cobras and the Cool Cobras. Now, uh... Yes, one is like $6.66. That's your basic. You get a shout-out at the beginning of each month. 
But the more expensive one will get get you a uh, shirtless workout videos. Taking off my shirt and working out and be like, yeah, this workout is for you. So if you subscribe to my Patreon, it's greatly appreciated. You don't have to, but it's greatly appreciated. This fucking content and find any time that I grabbed my boob. And I remember it was like Monday morning when I heard of this. Or this is what pisses me off about it, YouTube. Like, you want to get offended because a smoking hot of age babe is casually eh, eh, squeezing her titties for a Patreon video. She's not being overly sexually suggestive. It's just the slightest hint. The fact that boobs have been sexualized in our society, it pisses me off. I will drink to that. Or it was Friday, actually. It was Friday because I know they didn't fucking respond to me all weekend. So my Like, them boobs can be sexy without being sexualized. That's what I'm saying, YouTube. And if that boggles your mind, well, I don't know what, what to tell you. Page was in limbo for a whole fucking weekend. They're just like, yeah, here's two examples. Go through all of your content and delete it. And it's like, you can't do anything genitalia centered either. So even just like nudes where I'm not touching myself, if it's like from the back where you can see my pussy better than my face, gotta go through and delete that. Can't that fucking sucks. I've seen Tara Babcock naked and I'm like, yes, Joshy, like. But you got to fucking delete all that shit legit because Patreon's throwing a, a stickler fit about it. Like, fuck off. Okay, if you don't want people to post it on your fucking website, then make that the guideline in the first place. This is where YouTube and Patreon fuck up. You're going to sit there and say, oh, Holly Wolf can't fucking... Shake your titties in a micro bikini, and King Cobra can't wear a cock holster and play guitar and shake his cock in his ass while he's doing a Valentine's Day special for his adult fans for a measly fifty dollars without it being taken as sexual content. Then make it very clear in your guidelines to begin with. Like you can't just sit there and say. Oh, sure, whatever. And then as soon as they fucking do it, then you come down with the band hammer. That's bullshit. This is what pisses me off about Patreon and YouTube. They don't con conclusively define the rules of their websites. If out of nowhere they just decide we're going to be less sexually explicit in our material, therefore you have to comply, otherwise your account gets deleted. Like, fuck, dude, if you don't want people doing that shit in the first place, then don't allow it on your website to begin with. I grab my boobs like this, or... Mm. Like, I don't even know if I can handle mm -hmm. A whole fucking weekend, they're just like, yeah, here's two examples, go through all of your content and delete it. And it's like, you can't do anything genitalia-centered either, so even just, like, nudes where I'm not touching myself, if it's, like, from the back where you can see my pussy... I would touch myself to Tara Babcock. That's obnoxious, but it's the truth, and she doesn't care. Like, Tara Babcock made a video saying, hey, if you like to masturbate to me, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, the kind of content she provides, she wants people to feel attracted to her in that way, I guess. Better than my face? Uh, gotta go through and delete that. Can't, like, grab my boobs like this. or no. Like, I don't even know if I can hand bra still, but at least I have a lot of my content. Being told that what your content is slutty, but then other people tell you, no, girl, it's sexually liberating. Keep doing your thing. I want to say this. It's sexually liberating and keep doing your thing. Fuck the haters, dude. They want to fucking crap on you because you're a little sexual with your content. Dude, as long as the people you're with are of age and it's consensual, who the fuck cares? If you're not hurting children with your content, 
Who the fuck cares? You want to show your tits off on OnlyFans? Fucking go right the fuck ahead, girl. You can make a million dollars showing off your tits on OnlyFans. You're a lucky bitch. Because let me tell you, if I could show off my cock for a million dollars on OnlyFans, I'd probably do it. I'm still up, but I like broke down. I broke down and I called Jay and I texted Hunter and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Stop referring to women as bitches unless they rightfully deserved it. Like if you're going to the bar to pick up, you don't see, oh, I'm going to the bar to pick up some B words. No. You're like, yeah, I'm going up to the bar to pick up some chicks, man. That sounds a lot more respectful than saying the latter of YouTube. And I just like, I was like, yo. And if you're going to the bar to pick up chicks, the fucking, it's written all over your face, dude. Nine times out of ten, unless you're a smooth dude, you go to the bar to pick up chicks, it ain't going to work. Because when men are trying to pick up chicks at the bar, it's obvious. So fucking obvious. Kind of like that one girl who's got white girl wasted. Her ex-boyfriend was a piece of shit. And she just wants some dick to fuck to get it out of her mind. So she's fucking hitting on every dude at the bar she sees. Yeah, shit. And then all of these weird things started building up in me. Like, I was getting insecure about things I haven't been insecure about for, like, years and years and years. And it was so unrelated. That can happen, honey. When you're fucking dealing with stress from other situations, it's very typical when you're having one of those bad days. You're having a bad fucking couple of days. So it just gets worse for the next couple of weeks. And then finally it stops. All of a sudden, you're feeling insecure about little shit you haven't felt insecure about in, like, years. And it's like, dude, stop. It's so stupid, but I just feel like I was up to here with, like, residual stress that had not yet unboiled from the last fuck-up. And I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, I am I'm uncertain about my career. I'm uncertain about what I want to do. I haven't. Yes, that can happen, dog. When you're dealing with stress, you're going to be uncertain with your career, your choices in life. Stress will do that to you. Fuck the stress and just keep doing your I'm thing. motivated for fucking weeks. I can't fucking do my job when I'm this fucking stressed out and this fucking tired. And I was like, I was like sobbing on the phone to Jay and shit. And I was just like, I am not fucking. I don't care how hot the chick is. I don't like hearing about women sobbing or crying. I don't like the idea of women and children crying because they're unhappy. Like, the world can be a miserable place, but we got to protect women and children and elderly people as men. That's just how it is. If you disagree with me, you can fuck off. Like, you see a woman crying because her boyfriend just dumped her because she wasn't pretty enough. But, like, in your eyes, she's the prettiest woman you've ever fucking seen. So you do everything in your power to fucking make, make her see that. Like, buy her a rose, take her out for drinks, and be like, girl, fuck your last boyfriend. Now, like, if you're going to do that kind of shit, don't try to make it off like you're trying to fuck that chick because she'll she'll just fucking be like, nope, I'm not into it. <clears throat> it's the truth. I tend to understand women a lot better than most men do, to be honest. And I can feel that in the atmosphere. Uh, you know, okay, and I haven't been okay for like a week and a half. I haven't had a, a chance to breathe. All of the good things are just Hunter, which also scares me because it's like, if Hunter's the only good thing in my life, am I fucking living for Hunter at this point? Like, what the fuck is going on? And I was even feeling. Now you're living to discover yourself. 
you're not living for Hunter or for yourself. You're just you're living to discover yourself. And that's what everyone does when you reach a certain age. You're living to discover things, who you are as a person. It's all part of it's all part of becoming an adult and just growing up and doing your thing, you know? guilty that he's been so great to me and i'm like texting him while he's at work about like all of these fucking things that are going wrong and like asking for his advice because some of these things i genuinely didn't know what to do yes you got a chick texting you for advice you got it made dude you got an of each chick you're attracted to and you want her to notice you, but as soon as you're trying to make yourself noticed, you get called a simp or an incel or this and that. You get told you're trying too hard. And it's like, how are you supposed to, uh, you know, chicks expect you to make the first goddamn move. And as soon as you're just trying to make the first goddamn move, you get called a rapist, even though you hate them. Dog. Got to be subtle with your approach to women. Just casual. Not in your face like, yeah, what up? It's your boy Cobra. Yeah, are you like it? No, dude. You got to be subtle and smooth with that shit. And you don't know, like, after all that stress builds up, and then you have to make a phone call to a place where you have no reception and you can't leave that place because it's about the place you're at. It's just like so many things. And like, even saying it now, I'm getting stuck. That is the truth. <sighs> like I said earlier, you get a fucking one bad thing. It's just fucking another bad thing happens. Sometimes that's just how it plays out. Like, the worst can happen when you're already experiencing your worst. And it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And sometimes you just gotta ride out that negative bullshit. You don't want to fucking put up with it. Nobody wants to put up with that shit. But you ride that fucking negative bullshit out. And it's like, hey... Eventually, you start experiencing better days. I gotta take a beer piss. I'll be right back. You too.
fucking wash my hands. How do you like them apples? My pocket knife fell out of my pocket. I'm going to holster that. Beautiful blade. Ah, all right. Stressed, but not nearly as stressed as I was because obviously these things with life. With life, I've noticed this, YouTube. With life, life likes to push your limits, push your buttons, and test you to your fullest. You say you're going to quit smoking or work on your temper, and it's just like, okay, let's test this. And that's when life decides to be the biggest prick on the planet and be like, oh, you're going to quit. Yeah, fuck you. Mm. One second, I'm gonna grab my slippers. I'm about to go out for a bowl of pipe tobacco. Gonna have some of that Peterson early morning pipe tobacco. You're gonna get, if you're gonna smoke a pipe and smoke pipe tobacco, in my personal opinion, pipe tobacco that comes in a tin is much better than the shit that comes in the bags. Although I ain't gonna knock it if it's all you can afford or if it's what's sent to you, you know what I'm saying? I you know, like Cobra's a pipe smoker. Yes, I love smoking a tobacco pipe. It's so relaxing. Takes the edge off. When you're out of cigarettes. Mm. I take my beer outside with me when I smoke. One of the apartments I'm in right now are now smoker free. So I'm gonna go outside to smoke. I tried finding it at my last apartment and we saw where that got me. Not in a good position, yo. Know? So there's no sense in finding it. I love smoking a pipe. I've been fascinated by pipe smoking ever since I saw Roger from 101 Dalmatians smoking one. To Logic applied to them, which you cannot do when you got fucking stressed. I've tried, trust me. I'm like, I will be okay. Nothing I can't handle. It will be great. Like, oh my God, it was stressful. So yeah, that's where I've been. And today really, it. That's what you got to say when you're like dealing with stress, YouTube, is everything will be okay. I will get through this. Sometimes that's easier said than done, but trust me, if you don't overstress it and overthink it, you can get through pretty much any situation that you face or encounter in life. Is the first time I've actually felt like myself. It's weird how I, I like reobtained some body dysmorphia just from being stressed out about external things that have nothing to do with my appearance. Like I've been like, that's not weird. That's natural. Like when you're stressing other situations, you will subconsciously find other things to stress out about. It's perfectly natural with the way human psychology exists. Like my eyelashes look so weird and like why do I look sometimes better than usual when I'm like losing a little bit of weight and why do I feel so bloated and everything sucks and I never look hot no matter like what I do it's like it started 
fucking with my self esteem. In, in yeah, don't let it fuck with your self esteem, Babcock. Don't let it. In like fucking physical ways, and also in like, can I handle it if something? Like women are a lot stronger than they give themselves credit for. To be honest, in those wrong ways because on this channel, I've always said like I have as close to perfect of a life as I could possibly imagine, and. Because I haven't had that much strife in my life or that much like bad stuff happen, it's only like really isolated things that other people might think is a big deal, but for me, it's not that big of a deal. So I've always felt like I had such a good life, and I've always kind of in the back of my mind wondered, like, would I be able to get through if something truly, truly bad happened to me? And now seeing that just like 10 things in a row building up over a course of two weeks can break me down, it's scary. And then also seeing how much I need this like kind of new boyfriend, like to be there for me. It's also scary because like, God, yeah. I don't know what I would have done without him these last couple. You don't really need. Okay, that's that's what I'm talking about, YouTube. If you and Hunter work out great together, then keep doing your thing, babe. But like, really, you don't need another half to fucking your thing this whole attitude towards society that society has when it comes to sex and dealing with stress and relationships like you need your other half no you don't you too admittedly sometimes when you have stress in your life having someone else to confide in that you trust and you connect with sexually and mentally yeah it feels great you could just be like hey babe this is what's stressing me out and then just like hey you know what that sucks but babe i got you through thick and thin and that's a good feeling to have i totally get it weeks he was my fucking rock which is amazing i, I can't say enough good things about 100 you well, if you're your other half's rock, are you the female his goddess? Because that's what I'm saying. YouTube fam, that's the truth. Like, if he's not willing to see you as his sexy goddess, just the same way as you see him as your rock, your foundation, then that relationship ain't worth a shit. Jesus fucking Christ. It's scaring me how well this worked out when it's really... Now, I'm not saying you gotta worship her like a goddess, but treat her like one, you know? Treat her the same way you treat yourself. If you want to get pampered, fucking pamper your girlfriend. You want your girlfriend to suck your dick more often? Fucking suck her pussy more often. It's not rocket science, fellas. just the first guy that I liked actually that I had a fling with like while I was with Jay it, it's just it's weird how serendipitous our relationship is and how well we work together especially when we seem like opposites but anyway I'm gushing and going off on a tangent I hope you guys enjoyed the visuals that I put in here and I hope you guys are happy that I'm back I have some really cool content I'm happy that you're back I was worried about you I'm like I haven't seen Tara Babcock in a couple of videos what the fuck she been up to and it doesn't matter if it's a smoking hot blonde on YouTube or not. Like, if you subscribe to someone's YouTube, you're going to naturally be worried about them if, like, they haven't made a video in a couple of weeks or a couple of days. Like, oh, I hope they're okay. And this is the truth. And this is the first time I can actually say that with a little bit of rejoicement in my fucking voice because I'm actually excited. I have... A video coming up soon that's called my anal journey which i know you guys are gonna like a lot and then now if a girl is nice enough to let you fuck her on the ass you gotta be nice enough to reach around and fucking play with her clit while you're fucking her in the ass reach arounds work for straight couples too and um i have some other stuff coming up soon that you guys are gonna like and I think if I get demonetized again, anytime I get demonetized, I think I'm just going to like not take this channel so seriously. Like it's very. Got my pipe tool. I got my lighter. I'm set. Got some Peterson early morning pipe. 
Yes. It's weird to not do Wednesday, Friday, or or Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday every single week because I've been so consistent and I've seen this as like a huge part of my job. But like really, now that I'm not working 12 to 16 hour days, I really need to allocate my time better, especially to things like OnlyFans and Patreon. So if you want- That can be uh, a bit disconcerting, yes. If you're used to working, like if you're used to working 12 to 16 hours, all of a sudden you don't have to and your money situation is okay. You can work less hours and make more money. That's what a lot of people want, to be honest. You want exclusive content. You want to support this channel and give me more time to work on this channel and more money to hire editors and stuff. Please do that. The links will be in the description. But that definitely supports the channel so that I do feel like I can invest more time in making more videos and more higher quality videos without feeling like I'm completely swamped. I am so glad I got this off my chest. You guys are the best to talk to, seriously. And her fucking mic dies at the last second. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, sometimes that happens, YouTube. You know, life likes to crap on people. Before I go and have a smoke on my pipe, I figured I'd take a couple squizzles of this here beer. And get keep going off of Rebel Revolution playing. Play some new album while I go out and have a smoke. Like, oh, we got a sneak peek at Cobra's new album. Yes. We got Rebel Revolution, Keep Going, Society's Anxiety, Awaken Your Senses, Hail Satan, and Smoke Weed. And then the recent song I made, Powder of My Nose. So, yes, this song is... Coming along nicely. I got two more songs. I'll make eight songs for Rebel Revolution. And yeah, it'll be done within the next couple of days. You know what I'm saying? Just keep doing my thing and don't rush a good thing. Like I like the way I can layer my vocals with different styles of singing. That's pretty sick. Mm. Now, I don't mind smoking outside because I like where I'm at right now, living-wise. This will do just nicely until I win the lottery or build my dream house. You know what I'm saying? No, like, you want some proof of proof of my magic. When I got my lease terminated from my old place, I called upon Lucifer. I was desperate. I says, man, I need a place where I can continue my studies and continue spreading the good word of the Dark Lord, Lucifer, and just keep doing my thing. And then Lucifer gave me this apartment, and I was like, I'm not going to go into details, but there's a lot of reasons why this place is just perfect for me. The location, just little, little minuscule details. Now, this is like the last of my beer right here. Like I got half a can left. I don't care if I have money for beer for tomorrow, to be honest. It's Friday night. Want to get drunk for the weekend or a little bit tipsy at the very least and just entertain my fans. Want to play the song Keep Going off of Rebel Revolution, which is my new album I'm working on. The song Keep Going is about like just doing your thing and not letting the haters get to you, you know? Regardless of who you are, people are going to talk shit and be like, you ain't good enough or your shit sucks. And you're like, fuck you, dude. Now, in my personal opinion, I put out a pretty sweet collaboration of videos the last couple of weeks doing food hacks and trying new fast food items, going on YouTube and being like, hey, this is my opinion. You like it, you don't like it, I don't care. And 
No, my wands are highly sought after, and I appreciate that, because you're getting wands from a real sorcerer. And all simple words of the sense, yes. I love pipe smoking. You pack a bowl of pipe tobacco, you light it, and then you take a tamper and you tamp it down, and you light it again and you just puff on it. I love smoking cigarettes and cigars and hookah, but pipe smoking has always been a personal favorite. Like the tobacco is cheaper. Smells good to non-smokers. Not that I give a shit. It's just cheaper, and I like the taste of pipe tobacco more than I like the taste of cigarettes. Sometimes. Sometimes I'll crave cigarettes more than I crave pipe, but... I got two pipes that work in my collection. Loading up with some of that Peterson early morning that the fans sent. I have a shit ton of pipe tobacco that my fans sent me through the care packages, and I greatly appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? The amount of tobacco, sometimes I'll, I've been known to dig through ashtrays and squeeze a cigarette butt into my pipe and fill up the bowl of tobacco just to have a smoke. And it looks a bit dingy and desperate, but welcome to being a nicotine addict. So I do appreciate my fans sending me a bunch of pipe tobacco to smoke on, so I'm not sitting there jonesing for some nicotine like, ah, oh, jeez. For the Rebel Revolution album, we've got six songs at 33 minutes so far. But the songs Rebel Revolution, Keep Going, Society's Anxiety, Awaken Your Senses, Hail Satan and Smoke Weed, and Powder My Nose. Those are the songs I have done and written for the new album. And that's most definitely what's up, YouTube. <clears throat> Do appreciate y'all tuning into the stream. Taking a little squizzle of beer or two, like maybe two or three squizzles of beers and go out and have a smoke on my pipe. Yes, I've always wanted to be a pipe smoker ever since I saw Roger from 101 Dalmatians smoking a pipe. And, uh... Yes, when I was like 21 or 22, I bought my first pipe. It was a Dr. Bravo Grand Duke, little tiny ass billiard that I repainted green with a black stem. And it fell out of my pocket. And I was like, oh. Got a couple of pipes in my collection that I very rarely smoke out of just because of the sentimental value. I had a fan who made a pipe with two, with like hooded cobras on either side of the bowl. And like the cult symbol right there on the bottom. 
I still have that pipe that sits on my altar. You don't even know. No, I like making wands for my true fans. Because when they open the wand, they're like a kid on Christmas morning. It's just like, oh my god, I got my Cobra Craft handmade wand. It's like, yes. Yes, you did. No, I make honest money with Cobra Craft handmade wands. And my fans love the product I deliver. So at the end of the day, it's honest money, YouTube. People want to talk shit and say I don't have a job. And it's like, dude, I made $410 in one day flat. Even if Etsy took well over half of it. It is what it is. I still got the wands mailed out. I still enjoy using Etsy to sell my wands. So I'm not going to have a gift for my dad on Father's Day, but I'm going to put together something sweet when I get my uh, money from the new album. I want to get my dad something cool for Father's Day, even if it doesn't happen directly on Father's Day, it's still going to be sweet. Give him a bar, some tactical soap, and a Red Lobster gift card. You know, something that just says, I care. Like, that's what stresses me out about Mother and Father's Day. Because I don't have enough money sometimes to just be like, this is how I feel. You put up with my shit for this long. I want to make you happy for bringing me into this world and raising me right. No, fuck. What about this much left? Enjoying the weekend as I normally do when I can afford it. Yes. I hope you cool cobras are having a fantastic. Now trying to get this fucking Rebel Revolution album done as quickly as possible. Right now I got the album cover done. I got enough songs done to all I need is two more to make it eight songs even. And it will sound good in my personal opinion. A lot of the YouTubers are layering their vocals to make these videos, and I'm layering vocals to make my album. So there you go. Using my natural singing voice to create the sound you hear with love and vanity. That's all one person with the vocals and the guitar. That's actually kind of impressive.
I got two more songs to write for the album, and then it's done, in my personal opinion. But uh, Powder My Nose had a pretty sick guitar solo. When you hear it, you're just going to be like, whoa, dude, this guy can shred some mean guitars. I'm gonna have a couple of slices of pizza after the stream. I tell you what, like I said when I did that pizza review, that was gonna be my lunch and my dinner. And I'm not complaining because that little Caesar's pepperoni stuffed crust pizza was pretty. <laughs> Keep going, you two. The hitters stop you. Life is so, so sick. And then I 
Revolution when it airs. I appreciate the support. That's most definitely what's up. We want to end the live stream, so I appreciate y'all tuning in. If anyone donated to my PayPal, oh shit, $23.67. USD. Oh, fuck. I appreciate that. I give you cool covers of shout outs. Shout out to uh, Kim Hammer, Conrad Howie, Roseanne Bailey. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. That's most definitely what's up. Anyways, thank you for supporting King Cobra. I'll catch you later. Subscribe for more.